Who would have thought a day would come when Rahul Gandhi would say, let's see what emotions appear on his face when he comes to the Lok Sabha. The main issue is that the Prime Minister doesn't come to the Lok Sabha for discussion. One can only marvel at the audacity of RG, who lost a Lok Sabha election so badly, his party was reduced to 43 Lok Sabha seats. An aggressive and ruthless Modi promised to create a Congress Mukh Bharat and spared no opportunity to openly ridicule RG. Even in Lok Sabha, he once said, some people get on in years, but intelligence and maturity elude them. Sitting next to a sheepish RG was his mother, Sonia Gandhi, looking stone-faced. All the bhakts had then cheered and jeered and applauded how the Gandhi family was slowly but surely moving towards political oblivion. Then to use the title of Joseph Heller's book, something happened. That something was the demonetization move ushered in by Modi. As the days tick by, it is becoming more and more evident the ground level planning to cope with a situation where you are withdrawing 86% of the cash in circulation was very poor. The demonetization exercise sucked out nearly 14 lakh crores in cash circulation, leading to thinning cash supply. This not only hit households, but also companies that often paid part of its perks in cash. RBI says about Rs 1.36 lakh crore had been pumped back into the system until November 21st, but there are more challenges ahead. With payday barely a week away, banks are bracing for a possible surge in demand for cash. Assurances from the RBI and Centre, they have taken steps to counter the payday rush, haven't done enough to dispel their fears. To take some of the pressure off the banks, the Centre started giving its junior employees a cash advance of Rs 10,000 this week. The governments of Haryana, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh also want banks to provide paper currency that can be disbursed as salaries among their employees. And here is a new poll. After Modi got a poll done on his app where over 5 lakh overwhelmingly voted in favour of the move, here is another one. Over 60% of respondents to a business standard poll on whether India could go cashless said the country could not. Modi is very keen to see the country gradually transitioning to cashless transactions in an effort to weed out black money. The Jandhan Yojana was linked to the Aadhaar identification and mobile banking scheme to facilitate this move towards a cashless economy. And here is some good news, which had to happen in Gujarat. The removal of the notes has also brought India's first digital and cashless village, Akodra, which is 60 miles from the northern city of Ahmedabad, into the limelight. Most of the 1,200 people living here buy everything from wheat, flour, to potato chips through mobile banking. There's no cash involved. I would like to give you an example of how Rajiv Gandhi ushered in the computer revolution in India and I recall how mercilessly he was lampooned, criticised and ridiculed by the opposition then. While we were hammering away on typewriters, Rajiv Gandhi spoke of the need for India to move towards modernity. He felt India was ready for a computer revolution. Rajiv and his friends were called the Baba Logs to project them as fashionable, vacuous and disconnected with ground realities. In the end, Raji won. The same challenge now lies before Modi to prove this hand would work and what better way than winning another general election which is scheduled in 2019. In the interim, I would like to leave Modi with a thought. They say, learn to make your transitions smoother. Modi has pushed India into a brutal transition. Possibly, this move has been best summed up by a person called Shi Lancha, a visiting scholar who wrote in China's Global Times newspaper. While it takes political courage to launch such a trailblazing and massive campaign, it actually takes far more wisdom to give it a happy ending.